Good afternoon. It's a stormy day here in the Houston area. I'm Jana Rodriguez and I'm broadcasting live at the Easter Seals of Greater Houston Technology Lab with Bridging Apps. Today I'm going to speak a little bit about our favorite Maps apps. I'm going to speak about three of them today. Give me a moment while I switch screens here. Show my device. There we go. Today I'm using an iPhone, an iOS device. Two of the three apps I will be speaking about today can be downloaded on really any type of phone. I'll be speaking about Google Maps, Waze, and Apple Maps. Apple Maps will be the local map app that comes with iPhones. So if you're not on an iPhone, that one will not uh, be available for you to download on an Android phone, for example, but the other two will. I'm going to start off with Google Maps. Give this a tap. Great. So it's showing, if anyone was curious where we are, if you're interested in joining us next time in person, we are located right over here inside the loop near 59, 69. So it's showing right here by West Park. I've got it marked as my work location. So this makes it a little bit faster if I'm traveling around and aiming to get to work. On the very top, it says, where are you going in a white bar? If I give that a tap, I can search for something that I'm looking for. It can be something specific, like an exact address. I can type in something um, general, such as breakfast or lunch. I could type in a name if my contacts have been added here. And I can type in another general type of thing, such as coffee, a name of a place, uh, Apple store, maybe supermarket, a specific store, H-E-B. By typing any of that in here, let's try H-E-B. I'm going to tap search at the bottom right. It's corrected my spelling of H-E-B to the correct title, and it's giving me some suggestions of H-E-B grocery stores nearby. You can zoom in and out a little bit here to see which one looks like it's in the direction I'd like to go or at the bottom the white bar that says show list I can give that a tap to take a look at my options here. Here it specifies some great information this is one of my really one of my favorite things about using Google Maps is that it gives some information such as the phone number of this location the hours usually, and that can be really helpful. I love using Google Maps when I'm going to a place for the first time, especially if it has to do with food, because there are reviews on there uh, that are pretty much built by Yelp, and there are photos, and I think it's a great way to find out if what they have on the menu might be something I'm interested in. So, for example, I'm gonna switch my screen again here. I will type in something like, you know what, since we're in Texas, I'm going to look for barbecue. And actually, instead of typing out barbecue or BBQ, I'm going to use the microphone at the very right side, just under my battery there. If I give that a tap, barbecue. It's abbreviated it for me. Now I've got several options on here. You can see that there's ratings. For example, uh, the top one here has a 4.1 star rating. It's been rated by 884 people. It's got two dollar signs to let you know that that's the price range that it's in. It's a little pricier than the one below it, which has one dollar sign, and it's 2.3 miles away from me. I'll give that a tap. So as I mentioned earlier, one of my favorite features about using Google Maps to search restaurants is here's so much information. It's more than just knowing where it is located on the map. I have an option to call should I need to make a reservation, for example. I can save this. I can share it to send to someone else who I might be making plans with. I can even connect to their website. There's a description, the physical address. They have an option on here to see their menu. There's an option to place an order, and this lets me see how busy they are at different times during the day. 
one of the nice things about Google is its tracking options will allow people to say that they're there, how long they've spent there, which lets it collect this data to tell us when are the peak times, when is it so, uh, so busy that it may not be a good option, or just to expect that you'll be there for a while. I'm going to scroll a little bit lower. Now, this is my absolute favorite part about using Google Maps for searching restaurants. There are photos on here that regular people have posted. So if they had something great, they might post a picture. And it might become something I feel is interesting or appetizing. It might bring me to choose that restaurant, or maybe something wasn't so great. It might help me with my decision. So switching back here, there we go. There are 201 photos of this restaurant. Gives me a good idea of what the restaurant looks like, some of their food, sold. How can I resist this place when there's a beautiful piece of, now please forgive me if you're from Texas and um, I am pronouncing this differently. I am originally from Florida, so I'm gonna say that's a beautiful slice of pecan pie. Um, my husband says that I'm pronouncing that wrong, but that's how I say it. And I am a big fan of pecan pie, so this seems like the place for me. I'll switching back over here. Another reason that I find this useful is photos like this can help you decide how accessible this may be for you. Is this located in a place that's easy to get to? Is there enough parking? If you're going at peak time, is it going to be hard to find parking? Um, let me scroll back here a little bit. Go back. And another important feature I like to use with Google Maps is the Google Street View. If you've ever seen some weird looking car that's got a contraption on top, it's their camera. It's a Google car that has driven all over the world, up and down every street, and it's captured a street view. I love this option for many reasons. One being is I can get an idea of where I'm going before I get there. I'll know if there's any important landmarks that might help me get there to help me pay attention to the road instead of looking at my phone so much and get an idea of what I'll be working with when I get there. Um, oftentimes, I do take out my elderly grandfather. He's 88 years old and stairs are not very compatible with him. So if we're going somewhere for the first time, I do like to go to Google Maps, do a Google Street View, to see how accessible the entrance is or how far the parking is going to be. Is it enough room for him to get around? Is it too far of a distance for him to walk from the parking lot to the entrance? It really helps us plan what it's going to be like. So switching back over here to my device screen, you'll see there that delicious meal. There's 201 photos. To the left of that is a, another icon here and we can see the restaurant. There's a little loopy arrow at the bottom left. I'll give that a tap. Oop, might have tapped the wrong one there. Here we go. This here is the Google Street View. This gives me a good look at the location. You can see it looks like there's plenty of parking here. There's, oh, Something I can't miss. It's next to a giant armadillo looking bull statue thing. So I'll keep an eye out for this statue if I head over to this place. That really helps me locate the area. So very briefly, that was the Google Maps app. This is available on iPhones, most tablets, and Google Play devices as well. So pretty much any device that is a smartphone or has internet capabilities and that option of downloading apps can use the Google Maps app. Secondly, I'm going to speak about the Waze Maps app. Waze is spelled W-A-Z-E. This is also available to download on most platforms. It's not specific to anyone. And I'll switch my screen here. It looks like a little happy ghost on wheels. As you can see right there, it's the second map app I have. It's blue or turquoise. 
might be debatable what color that is. So I'll give that a tap to launch it. Great. So here again, I have it locating my current area and it shows me marked by work. As you can see that little blue suitcase icon. I'll zoom out a little bit here. You can see right there, right above us is a dog park. It's my favorite part about this office. You can't have a bad day when playing puppies are in your view. So that's pretty great about this location. Many great things about this location, but that's one of my favorites. Now, with this app, um, it is, I'd say, I'd word it as it's almost crowdsourced, if you're familiar with that term, where users of this app can input information. Where this becomes very useful and very helpful is if someone a couple miles ahead of you realizes that an exit is closed, for example, or perhaps there's debris in the road, maybe there's an accident that's now going to cause a road closure, that can be updated into the app, which will give you an alert. Waze is my preference when I'm looking to get from point A to point B in the fastest um, manner. So. Google Maps is much better at finding you a good route that's maybe shorter. Waze might take you out of the way, but it is aiming to get you there faster. It's hoping to avoid traffic. So be prepared if you're using Waze to go some odd routes. It's great about getting you somewhere quickly. It's very often updated. When other users are um, in the app, it will track things such as speed to let people know, well, you know what, it looks like there's a slowdown if you take this route. So I'm going to have you exit and take this odd route instead, which may be longer if you're looking at miles, but it should cost you less time. So this is one of the benefits of Waze. Just be aware it is constantly updating. So if you're driving, you will become friends with your, uh, your navigator there, who every so often will tell you, in 400 feet, make a left, or pothole reported ahead, maybe um, road closure reported ahead. So this is also, I, I'm not one who speeds, but I will say that it's, there is some peace of mind knowing to uh, remember to look at my speed and make sure I'm going properly with the traffic when it will remind you that um, a police is reported ahead or that the speed limit has changed. There are alerts in there. And as I switch back to my screen here, I'm going to exit the app for a moment, you can see the little icon there has a red 22. On my um, driving today, on my route, I had 22 alerts. Now, if you're in Texas, this shouldn't be any surprise, especially if you're in Houston. Um, if you're not from here, I will mention that our traffic is unlike anything I've ever seen before. So 22 alerts in one drive, not too alarming. Now, at the bottom left here, and for the purposes of this video, I have changed my home address. I'm going to give that a tap if I needed to get to that address. I've actually changed it to Chick-fil-A, which is a place that pretty much feels like home to me sometimes. Now, you can see on here that at the bottom are the options of route, send ETA, and well, I took too long, so it's disappeared, there we go, and overview. I'm going to start with overview, give that a tap. Here's a big picture idea of the route it wants me to take. Give overview another tap. There we go. At the bottom here it says 2.08. It predicts that being the time I arrive there, which would be nine minutes from now. Um, when I record from this connection here, it changes the time on my phone. 9.41 is not the correct time. Now, one of my other favorite options about this is the routes option. Oop, there we go. I have an option of list view which gives me an overview of my different route options. Or if I tap map view, I can take a look and see what my options are um, on the map to see what streets it's recommending that I take. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this may change once you get on the road as it's constantly looking to give you the faster route. So you may get alerts of 
faster route. Uh, we found a faster route. Would you like to take it? And it will give you that option to stick with the original plan or go with the new route. Again, this is constantly updated by other users, so it may seem like getting from point A to point B, the fastest route is taking Main Street, but once you get on the road, there's been a change, an unexpected change, such as an accident maybe, that's where this comes in really handy. It will give you that information and suggest an alternate route. So very briefly, that is the Waze app. Again, Waze is spelled W-A-Z-E. It looks like a little blue driving ghost, as you can see down there. And now we'll be moving over to the last app of today, which is the Apple Maps app. Here we go. Now, with this one, it will only be available on Apple devices. As you can see, most of them work in a very similar way. At the bottom, there's a white bar where I can tap for a search. Here again, I can type in general items where it's suggesting, for example, food, drinks, shopping. I'll go ahead and tap shopping. Or, just for uh, the sake of reference, if I had a specific address, um, maybe 123 Main Street, I could type that where it's blinking and says search for a place or address. And I can use the keyboard at the bottom to type in a specific address. For my example though, I'm going to use a suggestion of shopping. Here we go. Here's some areas nearby. It's also given me an option of specifying a little further what I'm shopping for. It could be popular shopping areas, apparel, groceries, sporting goods. And here's some popular nearby. I'm going to tap on the Galleria. We can see on there, um, it has three, um, oof, losing my words here. We have three dollar signs, there we go. We've got three dollar signs on the Galleria. This place might be a bit pricey. So I, I brought the map up here and we can see that there are, this is a shopping mall. It says shopping center there, it's 1.3 miles away from us. The other nice thing about this is at the bottom right corner, right below where it has the parking garage showing there on the map, it tells me what the weather is looking like. I do like that part about the Apple Maps. I'll zoom out a little bit. Great. And if I give a tap on the upper right, there's a little circle with a lowercase i. This gives me more information and more options to choose from. So I can choose from looking at the map, checking out what the traffic looks like with transit, or choosing the satellite view. I'm going to keep it on the map view for now. Great. Now I'll give this another tap. This also gives a lot of options that we saw in the Google Maps app, for example. There is also here an option to call, locate the website, save it as a favorite, or share it with someone else. I can also see the hours, the physical address. If I give find out more on Yelp a tap, it will open the Yelp app to give me some more information, such as those photos that I love so much in the Google Maps app. It is nice to have several map options. As you can see, personally, I do have all three downloaded on my phone. When I leave in the morning or in the afternoon, closer to traffic time, I will make my decision on what map app to use based on my travel uh, goal. So if I'm going somewhere I've been before, I might use Apple Maps for the sake of using Siri. My favorite feature with Apple Maps is that it is integrated with Siri, the assistant on this phone. So just for example, give me... Which palm? Ooh, spoke, I, I let go too soon. So I'll give this a try. Give me directions to the nearest Walgreens. Getting directions to Walgreens. So what Siri has done for me is search the map for the nearest Walgreens, and she's now giving me directions. In this, she's going to guide me 
For example, tell me in 400 feet, make a left. I'm going to end this example here. An important note with using Siri is there is a difference between asking, give me directions to the nearest Walgreens versus asking, where? I can do that. Ooh. Where is the nearest Walgreens? Searching Bing for where is the nearest Walgreens. So when you ask Siri to locate the nearest Walgreens, it'll show you your options. When you ask, give me directions to the nearest Walgreens, it will jump into navigation mode where she does start to direct you towards that location. Now, when I, am, when I know I'm traveling somewhere and I need to get there by a certain time or I am concerned about taking the faster route, that's when I will use Waze or if I'm taking a normal route, one I'm familiar with, and realize something has changed, which, again, in Houston, this is something that I feel happens daily. There's so much construction. Sometimes an entrance to a highway is there in the morning, and by the afternoon, it's gone. I'm going to zoom out a little bit here. You can see there are several different bubbles popping up here to show Everything that ranges from a, a little icon of a construction worker, a hazard sign. I'll give this a tap to see what's going on over here. Someone has reported 22 minutes ago that there's a car stopped on that road. Zoom out a little bit here. Knowing Houston, there we go. We're going to see some red spots. Here's some road closures near Post Oak. And this is actually on the 610 highway. I believe the speed limit there is actually 60 miles per hour, but as you can see here, it's reporting that people currently on this route are averaging about 9 miles per hour um, on the feeder road, and it looks like 18 miles per hour on the actual highway. So Waze is definitely my go-to when I want to, when I'm concerned about time. I want the fastest route there or if I feel that there might be some changes, maybe I found some traffic. I'd like to know, uh, oh my goodness, what's going on up ahead? The other day on my route into work, my usual route was so backed up, so I opened up Waze to see what was going on, and I found out that the light, uh, the traffic light up ahead was not working. So it at least gave me that alert to let me know what was going on, and it advised me to go around the traffic and. Uh, take a faster route into work, which was very helpful to me. Now, Google Maps, uh, briefly one more time. I'll switch over here to my iOS screen. Google Maps, again, is my favorite when I am looking up a place, especially a restaurant, because it is integrated with Yelp, and users can add in here their photos and their experiences, their ratings, from my previous example, I searched barbecue or BBQ as you can see up top. If I, I'll go to the second option here, give this a tap. I've got, I can scroll down a little bit here, I've got the typical information, the option to call and share, view the website and the menu. Google Maps shows me the times that they're most busy. If I scroll just a little bit further, I've got the street view option. It looks like this restaurant has actually added a uh, sort of a street view of inside the restaurant as well. I can tell because that first long rectangular image shows a little white circular arrow at the bottom right corner. That's letting me know there's a 360 image there. So if I give that a tap, I can take a look inside this restaurant, really get a feel before I get there. Again, as I mentioned, I travel around and I might take my grandfather out with me, so we are concerned about what's accessible to him. This is a great option if you're going out with someone who may have some special needs or special desires or requirements for going places. And in this case, I can see exactly what we're working with. The style of chair might be important for us, for example. and what the style of ordering is here. In this case, with my grandfather, I would have to help him take the tray 
you can see here that this restaurant is one where you grab a tray with your food. So it's great to know that before I get there. It helps me plan that I'm going to help my grandfather get to the table first and I'll get the food. I can scroll down a little bit more. Again, this is my favorite part, that I can see the photos that other people have uploaded on here. And honestly, this is um, one of my life hacks when I'm at a restaurant for the first time and I'm trying to decide what to get. If my menu doesn't have photos, I know Google does, this might help me decide what I'm going to order because finding those user photos helps me see what I'm in the mood for. So it's one of my favorite features about using Google Maps is searching restaurants and seeing when the busy times are, getting an idea of what the restaurant looks like, using the Google Street View, and seeing the, the uploads of photos from other users. Helps me get through the menu, so I do love that option. There are so many features of Google Maps, that just happens to be my favorite. Now, this today was a very brief introduction of our favorite Maps apps. In review, we went over Google Maps, we went over Waze, which is W-A-Z-E, and we went over the Apple Maps. All three of them serve great purposes. They have very similar services as well. Again, I make my decision on which map app I'm going to use based on the type of drive I plan to make. So if I want to get from point A to point B in the fastest route, I'm going to use Waze. If there's traffic ahead of me, I'm going to look into Waze to see what another driver has reported. If I'm looking to find out more information about a place I'm going to, I do prefer using Google Maps because it has so much information in there and so much to see. And if I need my assistant, Siri, if you're on an iPhone or some Apple device, this is on the tablets as well, I will use Apple Maps because I can bring up Siri. Where is the nearest Starbucks? Okay, Jana, here's what I found. My beloved assistant Siri has looked up the nearest Starbucks for me, and she's given me the information I need, such as the directions, the hours, and the phone number, should I need to call ahead. Again, with Siri, there is a difference between saying where is the nearest Starbucks versus give me directions to the nearest Starbucks, where she would jump into navigation mode. I'd like to thank you very much for joining us today. Please comment below, send us messages, let us know if there's future apps that you'd like us to speak about. If you have a different app that you're using for your maps to get around, please let us know, we'd love to know about it. And if you have any other favorite features, comment, let us know, we'd love to hear it. When you have some time, check out the bridgingapps.org website to find out more about other apps that we know and love. If you have suggestions, reach out. We'd love to hear them. Stay safe. Drive safe. Be careful when you're using your maps. Um, if you have a passenger to help you out, that's always preferred. Um, if not, my best recommendation is have a holder for your device to help you keep your eyes on the road and staying focused. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you. See you next time.